Hello everyone, this is Venkat for Idina. We have a great opportunity to talk to Prabhakar Parakala about the current elections and the mood of the nation. So I will start with the first question to Dr. Parakala. Is The question is, what is he observing from these last few phases of election and what does he think we need to be prepare ourselves as we go towards the counting and towards the mandate being fulfilled? Venkat, thank you very much. I am very happy to be on uh, Edina once again. I've been uh, traveling for the last 10 months, the entire length and breadth of the country, so practically touching almost every state. And uh, some states I visited a couple of times, uh, except some uh, remote northeastern states, I've touched every state practically. And I've been observing that there is a, there is a, a huge amount of opposition building up to the present dispensation. The present dispensation at any rate is facing a very, very strong headwinds. And uh, this is not, as, I, as far as I see, this is not a fight between any more the ruling party and the opposition, or ruling alliance and the opposition, or the prime minister and a particular leader. It is a fight between the current dispensation and the civil society of India. And if people look at, you know, they, some people talk about the Tina factor, who is there, if not the Prime Minister, the present Prime Minister, which party has uh, that kind of, uh, you know, traction and resources and election management machinery and all that. All those things are valid if you look at in a conventional way that this is a fight between the Prime Minister and another challenger. But if it is a fight between the Prime Minister and the people of India, nobody is stronger than the people of India. No individual is stronger than the people of India. No political party is stronger than the people of India. No alliance is stronger than the people of India. All of them, in front of the people of India, the any leader, however tall, it could be Narendra Modi or anybody, they would look like a Lilliput. And in front of the people of India, the formidable election machinery of the BJP would look like a toy car. And uh, in front of the people of India, a formidable alliance like an NDA would look like a, a scattered, you know, uh, ants kind of a thing. They just cannot stand. That is the scenario that I see. Um, my estimate is, generous estimate it is, that the BJP is unlikely to cross 220 seats. And along with all their allies put together, and some of them are just non-functional allies, just for the namesake. For instance, the President NDA has about six or seven parties from the, from the state of Tamil Nadu. You know, they, they are unlikely to score even one seat. And all of them put together, they will not be able to add more than at best about 40 seats. So 200, 200, 220 and plus uh, another uh, 40 seats, I think maximum they're going to reach about 260 seats. And then the question arises, what if they buy? But you see, what happens is the current NDA alias, not a single one of them is an ideological ally. So if they find that the BJP is not a strong force anymore, some of them who are not, none of them as I said is an is a ideological ally, they're all contextual allies, um, they would themselves slip away from that. So the BJP is very, very unlikely to form a government in 2024 June. In 2024 June, what I foresee is a non-NDA government, a non-BJP government. Okay. Oh, thank you so much. And today you have come to Bangalore for a consultative, uh, consultative program with the citizens. Why do you think this was important and why do you think you are, you've taken yourself all the way from Hyderabad to come? What is the importance of this? We don't usually do this in, during election, isn't it? Would this be a new thing and why, why so? You know, this election, Venkat, is uh, very special. The, as I said, the ruling dispensation is facing very heavy headwinds. 
and the ruling dispensation is very reluctant to go out of office. The reason is that if they go out of office, they have too many ugly skeletons in their cupboards. Starting from Rafael to Pegasus to electoral bonds to PMKs and uh, you know the difference between uh, how much the BJP had spent so far and uh, their actual declared uh, receipts. Some people have computed that to be about 60,000 crores or even more than that. So all these things and um, there, there are so many other uh, irregularities. You can, you, can, you can see, you know, suddenly there is a fire in IT office. Suddenly there is a fire accident in North Block. There is a fire in BJP's office and all this. Why are they happening? They are happening because if these people go out of power, then all these ugly skeletons will tumble out of their cupboard. This is one. The second thing is their mentor organization, the Rashtri Swayam Sevak Sangh, the RSS, is poised to celebrate its centenary in, in 2025. And by 2025, when they celebrate their centenary, they would like to have their own government, their friendly government, you know, to have their agenda, to show in 100 years have we have achieved this kind of a thing. So this, this selection is very crucial for all of them, the entire Parivar, this is very crucial. So they would like to fight tooth and nail to see that the election is stolen. The, the mandate, you know, the people's will is not faithfully reflected in the ballot boxes or the EVMs. So the, the mandate is, uh, you know, uh, sabotaged or subverted or stolen. Uh, this is very likely to happen. Therefore, that is the reason why they have already um, primed the Election Commission of India. Look at the way the election commissioners have, are appointed. They are appointed as though they were government secretaries. You know, the Supreme Court's role is eliminated from it. Now, if with that kind of an election commission, now you have uh, day in and day out from Prime Minister onwards to everybody in the ruling dispensation violating so openly the model, model, model code of conduct and the election commission doesn't do anything. And uh, you know what happened in Sura, you know elections are now uh, unanimous, and, you know, it, it, it didn't happen even for Jawaharlal Nehru. Mm. You know? For Surat, they've done that and they've stolen an election earlier in uh, Chandigarh mayor uh, election. And they tried their best in Indore, you know. And most importantly, the election commission till today, after a lot, even after, with notwithstanding a lot of uh, pleas and uh, uh, pressure, they are not willing to disclose the final polling details. So they're only disclosing the percentages and which are inflated. Now, you know, if, if, if uh, that kind of a thing is counted, more votes are counted than are actually polled, you know, what, what uh, is, is going to, you know, the impact of that, the consequence of it. So when all this is happening, we thought that the civil society should be very alert very vigilant. It should put pressure on the constitutional authorities, on the election commission to see that the will of the people is faithfully reflected in the ballot and the mandate. And we, are, we want to see that the mandate is not stolen. That is the reason why we gathered here. We had a brainstorming and uh, we thought about it. We, we, we will work out and we'll have some more meetings, maybe in other, another uh, places, places in the country, so that and our feeling is that, you know, the when the polling ends on the 1st of June and the, when the counting ends on the 4th of June, elections to the 18th Lok Sabha are not going to be concluded. There could be a lot of tumultuous weeks after these two things are over. So, at that time, there could be a lot of uh, effort by the ruling dispensation to buy people, to break parties, to, you know, somehow stick to it, engineer uh, some kind of, a, you know, uh, undesirable kind of a situation, atmosphere in the country. In any case, they just want to stick. So that needs to be prevented. And, you know, 
it is not possible just by the efforts of the political parties. So the entire, because this is an election which is where the future of India, its secular values, its democratic values, its plural values, its constitutional values are at stake. So it is everybody's responsibility to, to save the republic, its, its value system. Thank you so much. My last question would be, uh, what is your message to the voter? It looks like their role does not end with just voting. Yes. Your message to the influencers and the media people, to the bureaucrats and the politicians. Okay, let me start with the politicians. Politicians, mm. I think, you know, they, they, they must be very tired after you know, long drawn campaigns and all that. Please don't rest. Think that it is not over yet until of until you know a smooth transition of power has taken place and the new government is installed your role and your activity should not cease number one number two to the bureaucracy and of course that what i said about uh, political leaders applies to political parties too of course but to the bureaucracy to the officers please remember that your loyalty is to the republic of india not to a particular political party, not to a governing political party or ruling political party. Stay true to your oath to the constitution and be fair and save democracy. And to the voter, be vigilant and you know, see that on the counting day, don't think your role is over, it is now the political parties which are going to fight and it's, it's, it's theirs. No, there is a lot more at stake today Therefore, see to it that your will, your voting, your preference is reflected there. And say for it, it could be, it should be actually thought about and acted about at a very, very local decentralized level. For instance, in our booth, we are say about a thousand people. No, we know in about thousand people whom we have preferred. But if that booth, the counting comes out in a different way or more votes are counted than what, what hmm. was polled, then you must stand there and say that, look, this is not what has happened. There is, and therefore, and if this happens, you know, across the country, in many parts of the country, in many booths and many constituencies, many districts and many regions and many states, there is no option to the bureaucracy, to the election commission, but to come down and declare a fair result, a faithful result. And finally, to the journalists and the media, the independent media seems to have done an amazing job. They are doing an amazing job. In fact, you see, uh, <laughs> fortunately, the general public have forgotten about the mainstream media. It is the independent media which is doing an excellent job. And when these things happen at the ground level, at the booth level, at the constituency level, I request the independent journalists, independent media people, people who are using the um, social media, the digital media, the whom I call I'm, citizen journalists. They should be very alert till the end and put out, flood the uh, internet with whatever is happening on the ground. Forget about what, uh, you know, the, the, the big uh, studios and newsrooms do in delis and metros and capitals and all that. Forget about them. You do your job. And whatever you do has, honestly speaking, much, much more impact than what you could ever even imagine. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm hoping to speak to you after the counting day. Thank you so much. Yes, Venkat signing off for Idina. Matashto Vishesha video kalanu nodalu, matto hosa video kala bagay tiriyalu. Idina.com YouTube channel subscribe maadi, matto bell icon click maadi.